Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba' In this time of great fitna, trials and tribulations, Ahl Sunnah, the body of Muslims, needs to be one body, holding on to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam illustrated for us Salawat al-Rabbi wa salamu alayhi in an authentic hadith. He said, Khayr al-Nas qarni thumma ladhina yalunahum. The Prophet sallallahu said, The best of the people is my generation, then those that follow them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam also said, Innuhum man ya'ish minkum ba'di fa sayyara ikhtilafan kathira fa alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnata khulafa al-rashidin al-nahdiin. Adu alayha bi nawadij wa iyaakum wa muhtatir al-amur fa inna wa kulla the Prophet وسلم, said, as was narrated, uh, Imam Ahmed, wa Abu Dawu, wa Tirmidhi, wa qala hadith Hassan al Sahih. In this hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said, Verily, those who live after me shall witness many differences. And then he gave us a prescription, وسلم, he said, bi So he said, It's upon you my sunnah, and the sunnah of the rightly guided. Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdiin. And he said, Hold on to their sunnah, hold on to it with your molar teeth. And beware of newly invented matters, for every newly invented matter yeah, is a is a bid'ah and it and leads astray. And every bid'ah is dalala, is is leading uh, one uh, astray. The Prophet sallallahu uh, alayhi wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa tasimu bi hablilai jami'in and hold on to the rope of Allah and do not divide into groups and sects. And this brings up uh, something very important and the point of this very brief, um, very brief talk, which is to clarify some of the misguidance of the Jama'at al-Ahbash. And the Jama'at al-Ahbash, as some of us are aware, are all around the world, but you'll find them in the West, you'll find them in America and in Canada, and you'll definitely find them in Ethiopia as and in Lebanon and places like this, as their leader, who is Abdullah al Hariri al Habishi, who who died uh within the past couple of years, uh he was the leader of this deviant sect. Deviant sect, a sect that goes against the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And I want to just point out some of their deviance as a group and as is pointed out by the Lejna Diamond uh in Mamlakat Arabi in Saudi and in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, some of the major scholars have put together a very small uh treatise making clar clarifying some of the misguidance of the, that particular individual and his deviant sect that he left behind and the bid'ah that he, he spread. Some of the things uh, in regards to this man, he, he died in Lebanon or he, he basically left Ethiopia and went to live in Lebanon and spread his fitna there. And there he gained many followers and they uh, spread and he spread also with his wealth and, and the wealth that he was able to accumulate and those people who supported that dawah to spread their deviant creed back in his home of, of Ethiopia. And you'll find uh, that group gaining ground here in Ethiopia now and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala straighten their affairs and make them to come back to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and leave off the misguidance and spreading misguidance and attacking Ahl Sunnah and the people of good. Some of the things in, in their Aqidah, their Aqidah is basically they share a mix of, of creeds, that of the Jahmiya, the Ma'tazila, and the Quburiya, and, and many different Sufi uh, groups. And the Jahmiya are those people who negate uh, the meanings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, divine attributes. And the Mu'tazila, they also distorted the uh, and, and, uh, divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they have many uh, other um, 
distortions in their creed. And the Kaburiya are those people who believe in making tawassal or making supplication to the dead. And so they possess all of these attributes as we will uh, come across. And they are very openly uh, declare that they are Sufi. Now, where does the Sufism come in to uh, what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has called us to and what his companions uh, adhered to? We have no idea what person could call themselves a Sufi and then at the same time say they follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he didn't refer to himself Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu Alaihi nor did the companions uh, refer to themselves uh, and hold a creed other than what Allah and his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had uh, given us to believe in. Some of the things that Ahbash uh, do is they, the most important thing is they make shirk lawful. For Ahbash, yujizuna istighatha wa isti'adha wa isti'ana bil amwat wa du'a'ahum min duni lahi ta'ala. So this sect, they make it permissible to seek the help and the support and to supplicate to the dead. They say that they are the awliya. So they supplicate to dead Muslims and believe they are coming closer to Allah and that they're following uh, what the Prophet ﷺ called us to. But in fact, it doesn't take anyone, uh, it doesn't take uh, even the most basic Muslim understands that shirk is not from Islam and that this is shirk al-akbar which takes you out of the fold of Islam and it is all throughout and this is apparent through the Quran and the Sunnah and the ijma of the Muslimin and this was the shirk of the pagan Arabs of the time of the Prophet sallallahu as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَيَعْبَدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَضُرُهُمْ وَلَا يَنْفَعُهُمْ وَيَقُولُونَ هَأُولَاءِ شُفَعَوْنَا in the law. This is in Surah Al-Yunus, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this was the argument of the Quraysh, the pagan Arabs of the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They said, or uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them, وَيَعْبَدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ That they worship other than Allah, those who do not harm them, nor do they benefit them. And they say that we are only seeking uh, intercession with Allah. This is their argument. And this is the same argument of the Ahbash and those other deviant groups who call upon the dead. How is it you can call yourself a Muslim? This goes against the asl of the creed of Islam. And those of us who were non-Muslims before and left shirk, left calling upon Jesus, left calling upon uh, Mary and left calling upon the Pope and, 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 and saints and other religious figures. We left that because we wanted to have a relationship with our Lord alone. How is it that a group could call themselves Muslims and, ad and adhere to some of the principles of Islam, but then go against the main foundation of Islam and call upon the dead, supplicate to the dead, ask and seek the assistance of the dead and supplicate and pray to them? This is... Uh, something which is unbelievable, and this is a characteristic of the original pagan Arabs, which the Prophet ﷺ fought against. Another characteristic of this this group is that they tahrifihim li sifatillah taala, that they ta'awul or they uh, they change and distort the meanings of the uh, Quranic verses and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's uh, divine attributes. So they distort the meanings, but Ahl Sunnah holds the belief that we accept it as it was revealed. If Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala affirms something for himself, we affirm it. If Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala negated something about himself, we negate it. And if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam affirms something about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, we affirm it. As Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Ar-Rahman ala arsh istawa, that Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, rose above his throne. We believe this. We affirm this. We do not change the meaning. We do not use, we do not ask cave or how. We do not try to explain how. But we affirm it on its apparent meaning. And we accept that 
as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, showed us and as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala the Almighty knows best about himself Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala so Ahl Sunnah affirms this let's see what Imam Shafi'i says about this Rahimahullah Ta'ala Qala Imam Shafi'i Amantu Billahi wa bima ja'anillah ala maradillah wa amantu bi rasulillah wa bima ja'an rasulillah ala marad rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Imam Shafi'i one of the great imams the great fuqaha amongst the four he said that I believe in Allah and what was revealed by Allah in accordance with how Allah wanted it to be believed and I believe in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what he came with in accordance with the what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, in accordance with how he wanted it to be believed in. Imam Ahmed, وقال Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, نؤمن بها ونصدق ولا نرد شيئا ونعلم أن ما جاء به رسول الله صل رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم حق والصدق ولا نرد على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا نصف نصف نص ولا نص نصف الله بأكثر مما وصف به نفسه. Imam Ahmed رحمه الله تعالى said and we believe and we uh we believe and we affirm and we do not uh reject anything that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about itself and we we know what came with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the truth and is uh is is the truth and is is to be believed and we do not reject anything from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we do not describe Allah with anything more than what he described about himself this is what imam the imam of ahl sunnah wal jamaah Ahmed ibn Hanbal said, these are just some of the statements of the great imams, that we accept those nusus, those texts about the Quran and the Sunnah with how they are. We don't distort them. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has a face, as Allah says in the Quran, قال الله تعالى, كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإقرام. Allah says, and, and everything will be uh, destroyed, everything will have an ending. And what will remain is the face of your Lord, which possesses the vuljalali uh, walikram. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Kulu shay'in halakun illa wajhuhu. That everything will be destroyed except his face. This is what Allah says about himself, and we say that about Allah, and we leave it at that. We leave those nasus as they are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, we we affirm the that Allah subhanahu wa taala the the characteristics or, that he possesses uh, yadain hands. Qala Allah taala ma manaka and tasjada lima khalaktu bi yadain. And what prevents you from uh, su making sujood or prostrating before the one who created you with his hands? Allah said that. I didn't say it. Our scholars didn't say it. This is what Allah says, so we affirm it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms that he has uh, aynain, that he has eyes, then we, we don't describe it as the creation's eyes. We don't ask how they are, but we just affirm it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed it about himself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed about himself that he hears and he sees. A sam wal basr. Qala Allah ta'ala, laysa kamithlihi shay. There is nothing like him. And he is the all hearing and all seeing. This is what Allah says about him. So he negates that there is anything in his creation that resembles him. So we don't say we don't say Allah resembles his creation, nor does his creation resemble Allah. But we affirm that Allah has that is the Allah is the all hearing and all seeing. That there is no room for debate. But this group, the Ahbash, they negate all of these things, and they negate it 
by distorting the meanings and changing the meanings as their uh, Ashari cousins do. If Allah says that he loves, then we affirm that. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَحْسَنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ That Allah loves the, uh, uh, the righteous, those people who do righteous good deeds. وَأَقْسَتُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسَتِينَ And be just as Allah loves those who are just. Allah shows us that he loves, he possesses the characteristic of love. But we do not describe how, but we understand and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves as Allah affirms about himself. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ تَوَابِينَ وَيُحِبُّ مُتَطَاهِرِينَ Allah, verily Allah, loves those who repent and he loves those who are pure. Those are all characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that though that the that individual, uh, Abdullah Heredi, and his sect that he began, which goes against the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they negate those those characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and distort the meanings. Their aqidah with regards to the Quran, Ya'taqid al ahbash and al Quran al Kareem, Laysa Kalam Allah Hakika. This group, they believe that the Quran, the Holy Quran, is not the speech of Allah uh, in reality, Hakika. And that is, as the ulama explain, that this is a very wicked and false uh, belief. And, it, and it's uh, well known through the Quran and the Sunnah and the Ijma of the Muslims that Allah Ta'ala yatakallam metta sha kaypa sha. That Allah speaks how He speaks and when He speaks. Uh, he speaks uh, how, how, how He, uh, whenever He wants to speak. And however he speaks, alama yalik bi kimalihi wa jalalihi subhana, in a manner that suits his majesty, uh, his perfect majesty, and that is the and that the Quran is the speech of Allah in reality, as Allah subhanahu wa taala says, wa kallam Allahu Musa takliman, that Allah spoke to Musa, uh, with you know, real speech. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. This is what we affirm as Ahlul Sunnah. But these people, they distort this. And we affirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses the characteristic of Alu. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Thumma istawa ala al arsh. Wa ar Rahman ala arsh istawa. All and in many verses in the Quran, Allah affirms that He that He's over His creation and that He's over His his uh, his uh, his throne, Subhanahu wa Taala. We affirm that. We don't ask how, but we affirm those divine names and attributes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala as He affirmed them for Himself. And the Ahbash, another thing. What do they say about Iman? Ahbash fi mas'alat al-Iman ala madhab ahla irja al madhmum So they, the Ahbash, with regards to Iman, they. I have the trait of the methodology of the the murjia, those people who say faith doesn't fluctuate and that sins do not affect your iman. But however, this contradicts uh, what is the aqidah of the, the, the believers, of the Muslims, and what the sahaba and the tabi'een were upon. This contradicts it, that they affirmed and believed that iman is kol bi lisan, that iman is a statement uh, is 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 all all of these are characteristics of, of iman or faith is that speech on the tongue and the belief in your heart and the actions on your limbs all of this is a part of iman and that iman goes up with your obedience to Allah with doing good deeds and it decreases with doing sinful deeds. This is the belief of Ahl Sunnah and the belief of the Salaf al which contradicts Abdullah al Harari and his sect. Also, they mix in their, uh, with their tariqah to, to sawaf, they combine many different uh, paths. And you, you can find this in his own seerah that he studied 
uh, you know, with Naqshbandi sheikhs and Rafa'i. So they take from the Rafa'iya or Naqshbandiya and uh, and so forth, and they take many aspects of their deviant beliefs and go against again Quran or Sunnah and the Ijma of the Muslims. Also, another wicked aspect of this group and sect. يَتَكَلَّمَ أَحْبَاشْ فِي بَعْدَ أَصْحَابَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ بِمَا لَا يُلِيكَ وَمِنْ ذَلِكَ تَسْرِيهِهِمْ بِتَفْسِيكَ مَعَوِيَ رضي الله تعالى عنه وعن الصحابة أجمعين That these people, they resemble the wrath of the Shia قَبَّحَهُمْ الله May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change their, you know, distort their, their ugly faces, make their faces ugly that these people, they resemble this wicked group of the Shia in that they uh, uh, speak ill of some of the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in specific, in particular, Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu and may Allah be pleased with Muawiyah and all of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam especially when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi Wasallam said La tusubbu ashabi falaw anna ahadakum anfaqa mithla uhud dhahaban ma balaga mud ahadahum wala in this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ said, Do not curse or speak ill of my companions. But if any one of you were to spend uh, the amount of, of Mount Uhud in gold, it wouldn't even uh, be uh, a mud, which a mud, I believe, is, is it's like a hand. Uh, uh, it wouldn't even be a hand, um, uh, a palm's worth of one of them, or even half of that of what they spent and sacrificed in this religion, with with even just one of their uh, a palm's worth as far as as far as the amount of measurement. So meaning that if one of us were to spend a mountain of gold as big as Mount Uhud. It wouldn't even equal to half of what the companion sacrificed in even uh, with the palm of their hand, meaning that uh, the, the amount of gold that they uh, s spent that would fit in the measurement of a hand a hands full. So our mountain of gold doesn't even equal half of their half of their hands, their their palms worth. This shows us the manzil of the Sahaba, and it shows us the danger of this group and sect. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the Muslims from sectarianism and from those distortions in the creed and those people who spread evil and wickedness around the earth. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those people who spread good and protect us from the people of evil.